Hello and welcome to the 40 Athletes Podcast. Before we get started, be sure to sign up for our free five-day course on how to navigate your child through sports. The link is in the description below and it'll give you tips and strategies on how to help you and your child have a great sports experience. Now, let's begin. Welcome to episode 79 of the 40 Athletes Podcast. I'm your co-host, Jason. Uh, Jim is actually gone this week, so it'll be me flying solo, but every episode we pack with tips and strategies to transform your life, regardless if you're an athlete or not. Be sure to check out our 40 Athletes website, 40athletes.com, to learn more about how we can use our platform to help you have a great experience with sports and positively influence and transform lives. Today, I'm excited to announce that we have Kent Weed joining us today. He is a producer of a seven-time Emmy-nominated hit series, American Ninja Warrior, creator and producer of uh, The Hell's Kitchen, and most importantly, he's founder of LiveYourPurpose.com, which helps you find purpose in life and helps you live your dreams in a much way that helps you resonate with what you really want to do. Finally, he's also a, uh, a father and mentor and husband. So that's probably to him might be even the most important thing of all, like it is myself. So we're going to go ahead and bring Kent on today. And Kent, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Jason. Good morning to you. Good morning, everybody. I've been, uh, you know, I've been been watching some of your videos here and, and a lot of the things that you've been uh, posting about living your purpose, about, you know, the importance of mindset, heart set, uh, even like physical and even soul. Um, so many and so many people struggle with that. You know, so many people struggle with finding out who they are holistically. You know, tell us a little bit about live your purpose, you know, because you did so many other things before that you were so successful at, you know, from the TV mm-hmm. show and that kind of thing. What made you think like, oh, man, let's. Let's do something that, that really can I can give back that can really help people find their purpose in life. Sure. Well, well, like you said, I did a lot of things before before I created LiveYourPurpose.com, and um, you know, I followed my passions is what I use what is what I did to in my and that led me to my career. And I didn't know what I, I was one of those teenagers and those guys in their early twenties that really didn't know what they wanted to do, and I was kind of just going around, just taking odd jobs and just doing what you know whatever I wanted, you know, just to just to get by, just to, you know, pay the bills and stuff. And, and I got into television production as a production assistant and I was producing radio shows and it was a job that was okay. It was fun. It was unique. And, um, but it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, you know, checking the boxes. It wasn't exciting to me. Mm -hmm. And I could, you know, so when I started, you know, as a production assistant in television, uh, I kind of worked my way up through the ranks. And, and as I was, I was doing that, I kind of discovered that I had a really good um, eye for visual compositions and uh, for storytelling through visuals. And that's what led me to become a director. And, and I think that's the, the key to finding your purpose is to not try so hard, but there are, there are things you can do. There are, um, uh, programs you can take and forms and, and you can you can fill out like a bunch of questionnaires that can help you. Um, there's a thing that um, you mentioned Vishen Lakhiani to me offline before and Vishen Lakhiani has a thing called the three most important three most important questions. And I can send you a link to that. Uh, and you fill that out and that kind of gives you a nice overview of what you're passionate about in life. You know what you're passionate about in your personal life and your you know in, maybe in a professional way what you're passionate about and what your dreams are for the future. And by doing that, you can kind of identify areas that you are passionate about, things that excite you, things that, you know, kind of drive, you know, push the needle, push, you know, make you feel, make you feel happy. And what I found from um, television production and especially directing was I found a passion in directing and storytelling through directing, through pictures and visuals and working with actors. And and even in the unscripted world, I still believe it's storytelling. and that 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 fed that that need that desire. Um, what happened is, you know, as as in any business, um, it evolves, and you know, I kind of lost my passion because I was ending up to directing shows that I really wasn't passionate about. You know, directing projects, it was like, well, this isn't really making a difference in the world. This is, you know, it's not really, you know, it's not really helping. Uh, so I really. A little bit. American Ninja War is a perfect example of that. 
um, anybody that's seen the show has seen the show. It's, it's about stories of people overcoming obstacles in their life to compete on the hardest obstacle course in the world. And the stories of adversity and, and overcoming and, and, the, and they inspire other people to do that and, and to know that they can reach beyond what they think their limitations are. And that led me to, um, to create Live Your Purpose. And so I still continue to direct and produce shows, but they're all purposeful shows. Those shows that are going to make a difference in people's lives that inspire people and, and help people in di many different ways. But Live Your Purpose was created for people that are struggling with their purpose or that are dealing with a lot of things that I went through, which is, you know, this kind of racing thoughts going through your head and not knowing where, you know, you know, how to deal with it. Lots of stress and anxiety, sleepless nights, you know, not being able to go to sleep at night because you can't shut off your brain. And so I spent over a decade, you know, researching, studying, attending seminars, traveling the world, you know, meeting with people and, and mentors and teachers and to kind of create a program that was streamlined instead of having to go away for a month and sit on a mountain and meditate, yeah. you know, it's, it's a, it's a simple way to do it in your daily life and incorporate kind of be um, just to borrow from Pedram Sojai, the urban monk in your life, because mm -hmm. we know our lives are crazy. So, you know, we can't go off and, and hide out on a mountain or a cave for, for a month. And, and we can't spend two hours a day meditating because we our lives are busy. So what I was able to do is streamline that whole process and create a program that um, allowed you to, to, to have your freedom in your day a lot of, and keep the time that you need to, to, to do all the things, do all the things you need to do in your day, but, but only takes 10 minutes of your day and sets the foundation, the tone for your day that yeah. allows you to continue to grow and prosper and, and, you know, live a much healthier life. Well, that's something that I want to really get into you with is, is, you know, you can have these dreams, you can have your purpose, you can have all this stuff. But if you don't know how to tame and master your mind, you're going to be kind of like running a circle, right? So and that's what kind of you got into a lot is like really deep into meditation, really understanding how your mind works, how to tame it and how to master it. So your mind serves you and you're not serving your mind. Mm -hmm. Can you get into that a little bit? Like, you know, very true. And you even talked about, too, about how, you know, meditation apps are, are, are fine. But that's not really even meditation because you're focusing on the words of what the person's saying and not even able to dive into a deep meditation. You want to explain a little bit more about what you mean by that? Uh, sure. So meditation really is the foundation um, for my program and for, I believe, the success and, and the transformation that I experienced in the last you know few years, especially the last decade overall. But uh, it, it gave me this grounded uh, a sense of groundedness that I was able to handle any situation, no matter good or bad, and deal with struggles in a much, much more calm and, and, and you know, positive way, I guess is what it is. I mean, the, one of the key, you know, factors of my course is gratitude. And I practice mm. gratitude every day. And gratitude is the single most important thing I think that anybody can do. It's so simple to do. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. And, you know, when you practice gratitude, and I know it sounds cliche, you actually feel better. And it's not about just having positive thoughts. It's about truly feeling grateful for all the things we have. And I do it all the time. And I do it before every meal. And I, I give thanks to the, to the farmers that made the food and, and to the grocers that were able to stock it. And that I actually have food on my table to eat when there's, you know, millions and millions of people that don't have food and, you know, are, are struggling today. So, you know, I'm grateful for the sun being the birds and everything. But when, you, when we focus our attention on gratitude and we focus our, our attention on the positive things in our lives, it, it pushes away all the other things. It pushes away the, th the, the things that we're worried about. It pushes away the anxious the things that we're anxious about. And it, it helps our brain start focusing more on the positive. And when you focus more on the positive, you will create more positive things in your life. And that's when you were talking about with your mind. You know, our minds, our thoughts create our reality. Mm -hmm. And what most people are doing every day is doing the same thoughts, doing the same things every day, the same, you know, they're getting up, they're, they're having the same thought, they do the same thing. And so they're basically living the lives that they've lived in the past. So we're living, reliving our lives every day. One of the things that gratitude does is help you form new habits and form new thoughts and new beliefs and new reality. And so that's why I think that the mind is extremely powerful. Um, there are, there's tons of people that are tons of scientific studies on this. Now it's not just foo foo, 
you know, meditation, 3000 year old, you know, Buddhist thing. It's not just, you know, it, it's backed up by science now. Um, Bruce Lipton, uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton, who's a cellular biologist, has tons of podcasts, tons of, he has his own website. You can find it, find his YouTube videos. Um, and he, he talks about it that will, and when you hear him talk about it, you get it. It's like, oh, our cells have memories. And when you plant a thought in that, in that cell, that cell remembers it and it, mm. our cells divide and they re, and they re replicate every 24 hours. And, you know, there's another doctor, Dr. Joe Dispenza, who's probably the preeminent uh, person out there that is combining the science with meditation, with spiritualness, science and spiritualness. And he is another person that I would, you know, advise the uh, listeners to, to, to list, to, to go and check out because they talk about how science relates to what I'm discussing about with meditation and gratitude and compassion and, and practicing, incorporating these practices into your daily routine. And even getting into, you know, mentioning Dr. Joe Dispenza, like he gets into the emotions of it, right? Like, like the feelings of, you know, the, the future, the feelings yeah. of like, like feel a certain way before it actually physically happens as far as getting into the spiritual piece of it. You know, I know for myself, I've been doing some, some Dr. Joe Dispenza stuff as well. He's like, you know, get, feel yourself abundant, feel yourself yeah. like a loving person. Cause he was like, you can't be something unless you have that emotion of feeling like you already are. And so no, I think so many of us get in the trap of like, oh, when this happens, then I'll feel a certain way. When that happens, then I'll feel, we're looking for these external, you know, things to fulfill us. And he's like, no, be that internally. And then what will happen is it'll, it'll start to evolve externally. Yeah, exactly. You can create it from within. And if you start acting like that person now, your body will start living that now because you basically telling your brain that you are successful, telling your brain that you have a, a great relationship. You're telling your brain, you know, that you're healthy and your brain's going to replicate the, the, and start creating, rewiring your brain and rewiring the neurons in your brain and also sending that to the cells in the body and the cells will start replicating in that fashion. So you, to your point, you start creating the external world from internally instead of trying to create it, create it from an external world and waiting for that to happen. Yeah, you know, Kent, and then for people that are listening, you say, hey, like, you know, Kent, this sounds all great. This sounds like awesome, but I'm new to this. Where do I yeah. start? What's what's the number one thing I can do to get myself in that positive momentum of feeling like who I want to be? Where is my beginnings of all this? What, what would you yeah. suggest? You know, I, 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 I had another answer prepared, but when you said that, something popped into my head, which I think is probably more important and very um, uh it's perfect for, for, for people just getting into this. Monitor your thoughts. And what I mean by that is monitor every thought you have. Because when you have a negative thought, you have the power to change that immediately. If you have a negative thought and you take that thought in and you believe that thought and you identify with that thought, that, then it's going to become reality. If you have a negative thought and you catch it, you can treat it like water off a duck's back. You, you discard it replace it with a positive thought. And I do this with my kids. I do. I tell my kids, you know, every time you have a negative thought, stop it, replace it, replace it with a positive thought, change the, change the routine. Once you start changing the routine, you'll start seeing change. That's a really simple thing you can do. It's just start monitoring your thoughts being become, when you become aware of those thoughts, that's the first step, just becoming aware of those thoughts. And what I learned through my meditation practice was when I first started meditating is, um, you know, I, I was dealing with struggles and I would have triggers and I would, I would get angry or, you know, get mad at someone or something or mad at a situation. And when I started meditating, that gap would close. I would, I would still get angry. I'd still, you know, get upset about something or get triggered. But then I would, I'd notice it maybe, maybe in the beginning, it was maybe an hour later or maybe 30 minutes later. And that time collapsed over time. And within a month, I would, I would have a, you know, start to get upset and I would catch myself almost be before I got upset. And that's what happens is you can close the gap to where you are ahead of it. So before you even have the thought about getting upset, you know that that's the trigger. You're aware that's coming up because you're aware of it because you're making yourself conscious and aware of it. And when you get aware of it, you can get ahead of it. And when you're ahead of it, then you can stop that, all the anxiety from happening and the stress from happening. Mm. And you deal with it in a different way. Is that almost allowing yourself to feel these certain emotions and using them as messengers as opposed to suppressing them? Because I know a lot of, especially like, you know, in a society that we live in, we were taught like, hey, you know, negative, like, 
don't feel your emotions, especially as guys like, hey, emotions are weakness, that kind of stuff. But what I hear you saying is that, you know, I notice my emotions and they're like a signal to say, hey, something's not right here. How can I switch this immediately? Is that kind of what you're getting at too with this emotional piece too of being aware of your emotions as well? Yeah, I think the emotion is the trigger to something bigger, to something that is, you know, what, what's triggering that emotion. And that's what you need to be aware of. So whether it's your spouse or your workmate that constantly says something that annoys you is being aware of that so that it doesn't annoy you in the future. And then getting, getting, basically then you were in control. You're not letting your emotions control. You're not letting the external situation control you. You're controlling it now. See, the thing is, you know, when we get triggered because, you know, our spouse says something or, or someone at work or our boss says something, it's, it's nothing they're doing. It's mm-hmm. us. It's how we perceive that. You know, it's our perception of it. We're taking it personally. I mean, Dr. Yeah, I mean, not Dr. Um, Miguel Ruiz has the four agreements. And one of the four agreements is don't take anything personally. And, mm-hmm. you know, I have my, my kids that they have all four agreements, you know, always, always do your best. Don't take anything personally. You know, it's 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 these things are so important uh, and they're simple. They're really simple. And it's it's hard not to take things personally. It takes practice, just like anything else. Meditation takes practice. But you know what? You're much happier in life. And just if you want to get in physically in good shape, if you want to build up your muscles and you want to get strong or if you want to compete in something, you have to train and you have to go to the gym or you have to run or you have to swim or whatever that is for you. And then but that takes time. You can't just do it once and expect to, to be ready to go. It's the consistent repetitiveness. And whether that's meditation or whether that's just being aware of your the things that are triggering you, um, it, it takes consistency and repetition. Well, you know who are great trainers of managing your emotions is if you, you know, I have a five and a three year old. So like they're like <laughs> one of my friends, Ria Lala says, you know, kids can be your most triggered. You, you love them the most, but they're also they're also your most triggering human beings because you like sometimes you just want them to cooperate or if you had a long day and they need your attention. It's like, yeah. oh, man, I have learned. I think I've learned so much in the last, you know, five to six years from my kids on things like, why am I even frustrated right now? I don't even know. Like what's they're not even doing anything wrong, but I feel like there's there's this frustration within me. I was like, huh, what does that even mean? You know, so it helps you. Kids actually can help you dive deeper if you're aware of them of like what's really going on here. And I think that's the key is most people we tend to live on the surface. We see everything from the outside. We don't like look deeper on the behaviors or that kind of thing and say like, huh, I wonder what is really happening here. Right. So yeah. how can we get more curious? How can we get more like less judgmental? You know, cause I feel like like everybody judges everything about it without really knowing the whole story. In your opinion, what are some great ways we can get curious about our emotions and other people's emotions so that we get less triggered? Yeah, that's a really good question. And you bring up a really good point about kids. And uh, I've experienced it, too. And, and they are a blessing. And they are the, the ultimate triggers when it comes to our emotions. And, you know, what I've learned from that is that, you know, it's not about us. And that's the big that's the big takeaway for kids is it's about them. And when we get out of our way and deal with them, instead of getting triggered by what they say and getting upset, it's much easier to deal with the situation. Um, the, 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 the tips that I can give about, you know, dealing with judgmentalness and, 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 you know, criticism and complaining. I mean, first of all, stop complaining. I mean, number one, stop complaining because it, it does no one any good and it doesn't do you any good. And complaining is probably the op, the opposite of gratitude. Um, the, the goal is to be happy for the things you have in your life, and not complain about the things you don't have or who somebody else has. Um, it's not, it's not serving you. It's not doing any good. It's, it's like gossip. It's just, it's, it's like watching the news. It's all just negative stuff. It's just negative and it doesn't serve you. It doesn't, you're not going to grow from that. You're not going to get better. And, and if you want to continue living that life, you know, and, and maybe you're going to lose friends because of it, because you have these group of friends that love to get together and complain and, and gossip and stuff, but that's not, that's not going to move the needle. That's not going to get you moving forward in your life. So stop complaining. You know, judgment is, is a tricky thing because I find myself even, even today, you know, even, you know, I, I, we all have things that we have, you know, beliefs about. And beliefs create judgments. And, you know, I have my own beliefs, too, about, you know, 
whether it's what you eat or if you're, you know, people that are obese and, 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 and I constantly see that when I come across, I'm being in a, in a, in a line at a grocery store or a line at a store anywhere. And I see this obese person and not, and I'll think, you know, Oh my God, that's a really fat person. Mm. And that's, and I find myself that's judgment. I, but I catch myself immediately. I go, you know, I'm, I'm, am I observing? Am I making a, a you know, just an observation or am I judging? And, and the, the, the key is, is to, you're not, you're never going to let go. You're never going to forget those past things, but we're, we are all one in this world. We all share a commonality of love and unity that, that, and when you, when you come at it from that point of view, that person is just like you. Um, and, and judgment comes from not knowing their story and not knowing their circumstances and not having empathy. So, you know, when you come at it from a more an observational point of view and I come at it from we're all one and we're all united and come at it from empathy and compassion, then judgment kind of disappears. Yeah. I think you made a good point too with empathy. You know, I know one thing I try to do more recently is, you know, something like you mentioned that I see somebody in the store, I'm like, man, I wonder, I wonder what happened in their life that, you know, they have gotten to that point or, you know, I wonder like what, what went wrong for them that they didn't have somebody in their life to help them guide them, you know, cause I think the best thing we can do is surround ourselves with people that, that are where we want to be. Like, the, like you mentioned, like, you know, if, if people are complaining in your life, you, you got to kind of like ease them out of your life or, or not be around them as much. You know, sometimes your family members, sometimes you're around people that right. you can't help. Right. You know what I mean? But the whole point is, you know, surround yourself with people that are, at where you want to go because you'll more than likely be the next one in line that's just like them because you kind of you you tend to, to be like the people you surround yourself with yeah I, I think that's a very good point that you make jason i mean listen you know when when you come at it from empathy and from compassion um it changes the whole the whole you know paradigm changes everything changes the narrative changes everything you know because you you're coming at it from compassion then and you you know then you you know, and you, you mentioned something earlier, like family and friends, and you, you're not going to be able to disassociate, you know, all your friends and your family, but you don't have to engage with them either. I mean, you can be there, you can be at a family gathering at a family party, a Christmas party or Thanksgiving or whatever that celebration is. But when people start complaining or gossiping, you don't have to engage in that. You don't have to, you can just be quiet or step away at that point, you know, still love them and still listen how many families have been broken up and split up by pol politics, right? And the whole, you know, COVID thing, there were so many different sides on that too. And, but you don't, you know, you don't have to force your opinions on people. You don't have to engage in that. You know, you can still love them as your family or your friends. And, well, and, and even, even to the point of like, huh, I wonder, wonder how they developed that belief system. Like, and even asking like a question, like help me understand, you know, if you, if you are like people feel like they're heard, they're also less likely to complain because they felt like they've, Oh, I mean, they don't have to agree with me per se, but at least they heard me out. You know what I mean? Some people, they just want to feel like they're heard, right? That their voice is heard. And then that's a basic need that helps them maybe feel more positive. And if you're able to stay calm and centered, you can actually change the emotions of people by being the center point of a conversation, right? Yeah. And that, that comes with mastering your mind, not like taking things too, too uh, personally and developing an ability to walk in somebody else's shoes. Is that kind of like, would you uh, anything else to explain on that as far as like how you can help me help maybe shift perspective from people as well? No, listen, I think that, you know, you you touched on it really well, which is, you know, people do want to be heard. And, you know, when you remove judgment and you remove beliefs and opinionatedness, you know, your own first personal opinions and you listen with an open heart and without judgment, then I think, you know, you said we've talked about this a little bit before then you know you you're wondering how they got to that point you're more objective when you remove mm -hmm. yourself from it you become this objective person I, I i always use this example when you see a couple or uh, get in an argument in public or a mom yell at their kid in public you don't have an emotional reaction to that you're like oh my gosh they're they're fighting but if you're in that fight your 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 emotions are up here you know you're beta you're thinking yeah. in beta you know, high beta loan line, but, but so it, it the, the key, and, and this is actually goes back to what we talked about earlier, which, which, you know, becoming aware of your, your thoughts becoming, mm. you know, and this is where the meditation comes in, you know, the daily practice of meditation, you shorten that gap, you become more open, you become more, less judgmental and you, you find yourself 
in, in a situation or in a state where you can still, you know, be in, in the group with the people that maybe complain or gossip or, but you're not, you're not engaging in them. And you're more open to listening to people's opinions about stuff. I have a, 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 a family member that uh, we, we differ a hundred percent on a certain subject, but I listen to her. I listen to her with open ears and I don't agree with her. I don't agree with her point of view, but I listen to her and, and I respect her, her, her belief. And I know where it comes from. And you know what, here's the thing. When you step back and just listen, and then you kind of analyze it and from an objective point of view, you kind of realize, oh, I see now why they where they're coming from that point of view. It's where their where their environment is. It's mm -hmm. what they're exposed to. It's what they're listening to. You know, if you watch the news every day, and someone tells you on the news, you know, the world's going to end, and then you meet someone and they said comes up to you, the world's going, the world's going, the world's going. That person's probably watching the news. That Affirming, news yeah. The world's going to end every day, and that's formed a belief in them. So you become more objective. And I think that's, you know, allows you just to be less, you know, judgmental, allows you not to get your emotions and your anger up. Listen, there's nothing wrong with emotions. Not, I mean, and when you talked about earlier about emotions and not feeling our emotions and feeling emotions, I, I feel like there are, there are certain emotions that we should always feel. I mean, you know, pain, suffering, you know, sadness, hurt, I think is okay too. But but there are other emotions that don't serve us, you know, anger, frustration, resentment. Those those things don't serve us. And those are usually brought on by something that we feel about ourselves. It's not by someone else. I tell a story about, you know, when I first started meditating and there was somebody at work that always, you know, was I was frustrating to me. And and, you know, I was just like, oh, my gosh, I got to deal with this person at work. And. After about a month of meditating, I was like, you know, this person's much nicer than I, I actually thought. You know, I thought they, you know, I didn't realize it, you know. And I realized, you know, it wasn't them that changed. It was I. It was me that yeah. changed. And so when you change your perspective, you change your life, you know. Mm -hmm. When you, and I know you're really big into like biohacking. You're really into like human oh, yeah. optimization. And, and on your, one of your blogs, you actually talk about uh, three life hacks to create the life that you want. Um, and that's on liveyourpurpose.com. But I wonder, like, can we go through some of those to kind of give some people some ideas on how to, you know, really start to, you know, sure. optimize your life and get, you know, get the best from yourself? Well, I, I really believe that when you have your health, you you have everything. Um, you know, so, so many people, you know, spend their lives working really hard to make a lot of money and be successful. And then they get to, you know, a point where, where they, they lose their health because of it. And then they spend all their money to get their health back. And, you know, so I've been a big believer in, in, in finding health and longevity. And that's uh, the last 15 years I've spent, you know, working towards that and staying as young as possible, staying athletic as possible. I've done, you know, I used to do sports when I was young. I did triathlons through all the way up to my late fifties. And, you know, so and I want to be active with my kids. And I still play with them every day. I was out surfing the other morning. I went swimming yesterday morning. And, you know, we play football. We play volleyball. We, we just did a race on the track at 400 meter races, you know. So we're always, we're always very active playing volleyball with my daughter on a father-daughter tournament. But, you know, I want to be active well into my, you know, as long as I can be active. So mm -hmm. I plan to, so biohacking is, is, is very simple. You know, it's just finding the way to optimize your health for longevity and to be flexible and, and healthy and strong as long as possible. Um, and there, there's, there are very simple ways to biohack. Like I, the things I, I'll give you a few, a few of those and then we'll go into the, the life hacks. The, the cryotherapy I think is, is extremely important for getting rid of inflammation in your body. So I, now, is that the, the cold, the, is that, Cold water, thing, cold, right? cold water, cold water. Okay. You can do, you can do ice baths. You can jump in the ocean. You can go to cryotherapy places where it's 220 mm. degrees below zero for three minutes. Ooh. And you stand in this thing and you, you, they put music on so you can dance and get your mind distracted, <laughs> but it's three minutes and it shocks your body into going into this, this re urgent repair mode. Right. And so it changes mm. the cellular um, dynamics of the body. And so, it helps with getting rid of inflammation cells go into fight or flight and that, and they start, you know, repair mode. And so it's a good way to shock your body. Uh, infrared saunas are also very good for inflammation. Um, so I do that four times a week. Um, I meditate, obviously, 
and meditation, like I've always said, is the foundation and the, and the grounding of, of starting my day. Uh, it just sets me in a, in a, off in a good mood. Um, you know, I used to run a lot. Now I hike more. Um, so I hike 45 minutes a day. Um, and that keeps your body moving. A rebounder is good. Three minutes a day on a rebounder. You know what a rebounder is? The little trampolines. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. A little circular trampoline. So three yeah, minutes yeah. a day gets your lymphatic system going. Um, and then I do, you know, weights three times a week, but I don't do weights. I do, uh, what's called BRT blood. I mean, um, um, blood restriction training. So you put these bands on your arms or okay. your legs and they, uh -huh. they tighten up. And so when you do your weights or you do your resistant bands, it tightens the, the blood here. It keeps the blood flow from going to your muscles. So it, it deplete, it, it, it keeps the oxygen from your, from your muscles until you let them in. So you get faster results um that's yeah that's there's a via vibe plate which is another way to do uh, exercises on it's they, there, there's much many of these vibe plates um and then just my diet you know I, i'm pretty much vegetarian and vegan but 95 98 percent vegetarian i'll sneak in you know cookie once in a while or have a piece of salmon or something but but other than that um those are the basics yeah as far as life hacks, and, and I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a, um, a blog on biohacks coming up shortly in the next month. And then my next pro program after taming your monkey mind will be on biohacking, hmm. biohacking your health for, for longevity and mm -hmm. health. Cause, Cause I think that everybody can do it. I mean, I, I could do it and I, I trash my body many, many, for many, many years. So if I could be this healthy and strong and, uh, you know, after 60, I think that anybody can, and I don't think it's, and we you know it's our genes are expressed by our lifestyle. So let's, I want our viewers to know this. Don't, don't hide behind. Oh, I've got bad genes. Oh, my doctor said I have this gene. Your genes are expressed by your lifestyle. And Bruce Lipton talks about this. Joe Dispenza talks about this. Many, many people talk about this. And so the science of, of genes uh, uh, have evolved. Stephen Kotler talks about it. Um, we control how our genes are expressed through our lifestyle. So, and our behavior. So don't let anybody tell you just because you have a bad gene that you're, you know, you're destined for failure. It's not, or you're destined well, to die. It, you're destined to die at, you know, at 60 because, you know, you're all your parents and your friend, uh, you know, you're all your, you know, generations before died at that because they have a heart gene. I have a gene and a heart gene that says that I'm supposed to die before I was 60. You know, huh. my, my brother died at 41 of a heart attack, hmm. you know, so, but I have genes for diabetes. I have genes for, you know, other things too. I don't have diabetes. I don't have heart, any heart conditions. And I think it's because I haven't allowed that gene to be expressed mm. because of my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, I eat healthy. I exercise all the things that we can do to change that. Um, yeah, so I mean, that goes back to your. The number one thing in my life hacks is, is to get your physical health right. Whatever you're mm. doing right now, do what you can to get your physical health right. Listen, there's thousands of, th of things you can do and there's many different resources and and i can share my my, my take on it but uh, you know i think everybody's individual as long as you get out and do some moving every day i mean i believe getting in nature is hugely important grounding or earthing you know getting your feet touching the soils whether it be sand or dirt or grass you know hug a tree i mean hug a tree you know when i heard that saying hug a tree i, I laughed because I, I but but i now i get it because the tree is connected to earth and you know that a tree has you know like a nervous system like like we do it connects to other trees and other life they, 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 go, they go on for miles and miles and miles it's hmm. fascinating how much they connect to so many different things and uh so earthing is really important but get your physical health right that's the that's the number one thing and once you do that then you feel good if you feel good you're on the right step, the first step to move forward and to, to accomplish whatever you want in your life. Um, the next thing is to get your mental health right. And that's where meditation comes in for me. Um, and, you know, whatever your struggle, whatever that struggle is, you know, whether it's depression or anxiety or stress, I really believe, and I, I spent many, many, not years, but well, times, I guess, many, 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 many times in therapy you know, for whether it was marriage therapy or personal therapy or alcohol therapy or, um, and I got to tell you the only thing that really, really worked for me 
was delving into my own things that I that were the triggers. What 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 was causing it? See the the therapy was great, and you know all the other stuff, and you know it, it makes you it gets you to open up, but they never got to the root cause of it. And I remember I, got, I had a personal hired a personal coach for a while, and and he he found he you know we were talking, and I was journaling, and I was doing all this um, homework basically. Uh, and went back to my childhood and my parents and, and kind of discovered something that I had thought I had dealt with. Didn't, I didn't deal with. Mm. And it was just one thing that was holding me up in my life. And once I was able to, to find that and discover it, acknowledge it, deal with it, um, it freed me. It freed me for, and then I found that there was a big correlation to my personal life right now. So it's really personal, interpersonal work that we need to do. Journaling is a great way to do that. And meditation helps you get there too, because you get to this kind of state where you start, things happen, you know, you think thoughts come to your head and you go, oh, these realizations happen, you go, wait a minute, that's why I get angry at that. That's because, hmm. not because of this. I'm not angry because of that. I'm actually angry because something else had happened. And so there's a lot of, you know, revelations that happen in that. So get your physical health right, get your mental health right, and then take action. And whatever that action is, it depends on your own, where you are in your life and what you want to achieve, whether it's a relationship, whether it's getting more healthy and, you know, or, or stronger, whether it's being a new job or changing, getting rid of the job you have and starting a new career or just making more money. Um, what, and there's so many things you can do to take action. I mean, I mentioned it in my blog and you can look at the blog for more details on that. Yeah. And you mentioned uh, journaling. I know that's something that's helped me a lot in my life because, you know, sometimes there's things that they just get buried in there. Like, you know, you just, but that's a journaling is a way if you really like sit down and just write about your day or something that made you upset or something that like, and then you're like, Oh, I wonder why that. And then you, if you write it down, it's almost helps you like get it out of your head and on a piece of paper, but it's also nice because it's private too, because it's something that only you have to know about too. If there's something like, if you have a hard time sharing, or if you have a hard time maybe talking in a group setting or with the therapist, it kind of can, you can kind of be your own therapist sometimes by just having some prompting questions or, you know, just writing what's on your mind. Like literally like, I'm mad. Well, why am I mad? Okay. What happened? Okay. What? And then all of a sudden you're like, you know, five minutes later, like, Oh, wow. That's a really, it helps you raise your awareness. Right. Is that kind of what you found? I definitely found that to be true. And I journaled um, probably on and off for 30 years. One of the things that I, I noticed in my journals, I went back and looked at some old journals, journals from 20 years ago. And you know how we talked earlier about, you know, our, we, we create the same life over and over again, day after day, mm -hmm. by By repeating the same patterns. And um, if you want proof of that in journal for 20 years, and then go back and look at your journals and you go, Oh my God, that's the same thing I was doing. And I'm doing, still doing it. You know, it's like yeah. you, you you get I mean, because it's a record of of your you know your behaviors and your 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 thoughts and what you were feelings and and if you're having those same thoughts and feelings today that you had 20 years ago you're, you haven't changed you're not doing anything different to to make it different you know it's 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 not up to some outside force or the outside world to change you it's up to you to change you so um yeah journaling is awesome it is certainly a great way to to really get in intention uh, getting in touch with what's uh especially issues that are bothering you and it's also a great way to come up with ideas for mm -hmm. what you know when you're talking when we talk about taking action and the next step you know what is it i'm gonna what do i want to do by the way you in journal what's this is another great thing about journaling you can ask yourself questions in journaling and it's kind of like planting a seed in your brain where you're asking yourself and 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 i believe god or the universe answers us and it's you know, similar to prayer you yeah, throw it out there. So I'm not sure what I, I like this. I want to do this. But what, I don't know what, what, what I don't know what I should do next. Should I do this? I, and just wait for the answer sometimes. And you know what? It could appear in the strangest of ways. I had answers appear on a billboard driving down this road. I really have. I go, oh, yeah. I was just, that's it. Okay, thank you. But you got to be, you got to be, yeah, be aware. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to be open to the answer, you know, because you can drive right by the billboard and not see your answer, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I've, I've multiple, I've even seen like something like on a, on, on like a license plate, right? Like something like super small, super simple, but I was like, oh, okay. Well, that was to make sense now. It's kind of like yeah. as a guide, if you, like you said, it goes back to paying attention, being aware of it. Like, and also having a idea of like purpose and meaning 
you know, what's something that gets you out of bed that you jump out of bed, right? That's something like, oh man, I have to do this. Like, oh no, I get to do this. I'm excited about it. And I think one thing about purpose is, you know, understanding that whatever you're doing today is preparing you for tomorrow. I think so many people get stuck in like, well, I'm doing this and this is what I'll be forever. I'm like, you can evolve, you can change. And what we don't realize is that life is just a big training ground, right? And then you don't know what, because I look back 10 years ago, I was like, oh, if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be prepared for what I'm doing mm-hmm. right now. You know, so like developing that positive mindset, hey, what you're doing right now has a purpose, but we're just not sure what it is right now. And using that faith and believing like, oh, I'm going to use this skill to help me with what's next. That's so true, Jason. It's, it's a very, very well said. And you know, a lot of people, um, and I was, I was just equally one of those people too, I think that we get caught up in our daily routine and we, we think it's not purposeful because it's not moving the needle forward. What we don't realize is that experience that we're having may benefit us hugely in the future. Um, you know, I myself went through, you know, lots of struggles and adversity. And, um, and even though at the time I didn't think it was, you know, benefiting me, I didn't think it was helping me. I didn't think that, it, you know, I was going anywhere and I was, you know, depressed and despondent and, you know, angry and frustrated and resentful and all those emotions um, I look back on it now and, and I realize it was those moments that led me to be where I am today, whether it mm-hmm. was, you know, failures or, um, you know, my alcohol addiction or, you know, dealing with drugs in my 20s you see, or lo- a loss of a family member, a loss of a best friend, you know, all those things led, uh, led me to, to growth. And, and I look back on those experiences and I wouldn't be the same person I am today. Here's the other thing that's real important. I think for, for our listeners is, you know, like you said, we have the power to change. We have the, that power and, and we're not, I'm not the same person I was 10 years ago. I've evolved. And like you said, we evolve and give yourself grace. You know, when you, when you feel stuck, give yourself a little grace to say, Hey, it's okay. It's okay. You know, every day is a new day and a new day to start, and a new day to begin anew and, you know, be your best in that day and and it'll lead to greatness. Yeah, it's, you know, it's so well said, too. You know, I uh, I lost my dad suddenly 20 years ago and I look back like, man, if I hadn't gone to that, would I be as empathetic? Would I be as passionate about what I'm doing because of being a great dad, you know, mental health, all right. these kind of things? Because it gives you a connection, like it pulls in your heartstrings because you empathize with other people that maybe are going through similar things. And it gives you that inspiration as opposed to motivation, because, you know, motivation, like we always say, it's external, it's up and down. But inspiration, you can get through tough times quicker because, you know, this is going to help more people. Right. And I think that's what I love about what you're doing is like we know that it'll help people. We know that it'll make lives better. So, um, you know, final a couple of final insights on that, you know, like sharing about the importance of having inspiration as opposed to motivation. Yeah. I mean, you touched on it earlier when you said, you know, what's going to get you out of bed in the morning? What's going to get you when you wake up, make you want to jump out of bed and go, let's go. And, and that's the difference between inspiration and motivation. I think you can be motivated to go, but you know, motivation dries up after a while, you know, Mm -hmm. it doesn't, it doesn't have a long lasting effect. When you're inspired, it's usually something bigger than yourself. And what I found is motivation is usually personal. It's it's it's, it's about me. It's about me being motivated to go and get stronger or healthier or whatever it is. But when I'm inspired, the difference between motivated to be healthy for me to be strong and healthy and inspired to be healthy is I'm inspired to be healthy for my kids. Mm-hmm. It's not about me. It, it really isn't. I mean, yeah, there's, I get the benefits of it. Sure. I, I gain the benefits of being strong and healthy at, you know, at 60 years old, but, but, but the, but the inspiration comes from my kids from being able to play with them and, 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 and be active with them and, and be an active participant in their lives. That's the difference between motivation and inspiration. So find yeah. something that inspires you to do something that, you know, maybe you have a goal, maybe you have a thought of something you want to do, then find something that inspires you to do it. That's bigger than you bigger than yourself. Mm-hmm. And and that'll get you out of bed in the morning. <laughs> yeah. 
And, you know, with kids too, what we don't realize is like, Hey, they're watching this all the time. Like we are their example. Right. You know? So that piece of like, well, Hey man, if, if dad is, you know, that age and he's still doing all these things, well, so can I, you know, so that it, it just kind of helps you with your family legacy of like, Hey, this is what yeah. we, we take care of ourselves. We look out for each other. And that sets the tone for them at a young age, which will help them the rest of the life. Like I think people underestimate the value of the first 12 years of life. Like that, that's such a, you know, developmental age that we as parents can have such a big influence on our kids in a positive way to not take that for granted. So yeah. as well, well said there, Ken. That's a good point. And I have a 23 year old son also, in addition to my 13 year old and 10 year old, but, and, and he went through those, those first 12 years. And um, just last year he started running uh, Spartan races and, and he got very competitive. He's like very, you know, very athletic. He's, he's buff and he's strong. And it's like, Oh, I'm like, Where'd you learn? Where'd you get that from? He's like, I got it from you. He was like, you're like, so oh, it, okay. It, it's you know, it's like like putting money in a in a you know in a stock or something and just letting it sit for ten years, yeah. and waiting for it to waiting for it to mature, right? Or waiting for an insurance policy to mature or something. You just have to be patient and and wait for it to mature, and then it it pays off in dividends. So yeah, because you know sometimes you're like, man, is it, is this really paying? Off? I, I'm I'm trying, and then it's like, oh, then they'll do something in public or they'll do what your son's doing. You're like, okay. I was uh, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm on the right track. I'm doing my best. I think it's just sometimes, like you said, it's a, uh, it just takes a while for it to come to fruition. Right. You know? So, uh, and we it always is, finish. Way, that's the, oh, that's yeah, the same ahead. thing with our goals, by the way, and, mm. and the dreams that you have, it's not going to be on your timeline. It's going to be on the timeline when you're ready for it to happen in your life. So you have to be patient. You know, it doesn't always just appear. I mean, um, it doesn't work that way. But yeah. when it does come, it's usually amazing. So be patient. And that's where like you use you meditation to imagine it in your mind, even though you may not physically see it, but you can still see it in your mind and use that power to like allow it to come to you, use that momentum. So um, I think a lot of people get discouraged whenever they don't see something like physically around them, like, oh, it's not happening. Like, no, it's it's happening. Just keep going. Keep the, keep yeah. it. Keep it. Feel know, the so. emotion that's attached to it. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we always finish with the four cues with 40 athletes. These are our last tidbits of insight from our guests. And the first one is this. In your opinion, what does it mean to win in the game of life? What does it mean to win in the game of life? Well, if you can feel good about your day when you lay your head down at night um, every day, then then you're winning. Mm. Simple. I like that. Yeah, it's... Uh, um going back to that feeling uh, the feeling of, yeah, of you can feeling you lay your head down at night and you and you start thinking about your day and what you did and you can feel good about it then you're winning mm, i like that the second one is if you could spend time with anyone you admire in sports uh a passed away a lot fictional non-fictional who would you pick and why would you choose them um wow you know, I I, I, I was going to say one person wanted to change my mind midstream. So I'm going to say Kobe Bryant. Oh, yeah. Because there's so many things I didn't know about Kobe until after he passed away mm. that, that I really identify with. And I would love to, you know, and I think his work ethic and his determination and dedication and, you know, his also his mindfulness about things was really impressive. And I would love to just I'd love to spend an hour talking with him about life and, you know, and how it worked and such a great role model, you know, not just athletically or physically, but, you know, um, his compassion and, and mindfulness and, you know, he was very much into meditation as well too. So, yeah. Well, and the things he had planned, you know, before he yeah. passed away to really make a difference using, I mean, you know, it'd be amazing what our, our sports world would probably be like, it's especially like for kids, if he was still around to have that significant influence, you know? So, I so he'd definitely be somebody on my list as well. I would agree with that totally, Kent. Um, okay, third one is this. Uh, what's the best advice you received from a coach you've either had, you've worked with, worked for? Um, what's the best advice you received from a coach? Um, it was probably in high school. It was my track coach or my track and cross-country coach. And he said – when you think you can't go any further, it's just a thought. 
what is, I'm trying to remember exactly what he said. I, I, I don't have to paraphrase it. When you think you can't go any further, you've just begun to go. Mm. So, and, and, you know, when you're running track, or you're running cross country, you're running long distance and you go and, and something, so just keep pushing yourself, push yourself. It was like, push yourself harder than if you can't go any, if you think you can't go any farther then push yourself harder. It's like, you got to, it's like the whole, like dig deeper. And, yeah. and that just stuck with me because there was many times, especially in my triathlons were like, I was like, I'm, I'm tired. I can't do it. I can't do it. And it's like, you know, and I, and that would click, that would just pop back in my head. It's like, well, I'm not trying hard enough. I'm not pushing hard enough. I'm not, you know, it's not that I, you know, I've run out of juice. So I'm not pushing hard enough and calling enough for my, you know, so. It's like extending your limits, right? Like you have your, what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, it was an interesting way of really saying can. that you can have a lot more juice in the tank, mm -hmm. you know, gas in you the realize. tank. Then you realize. But yeah. so don't let your mind tell you something that, you know, that the tank's empty yet. You know, it's just the yellow light going on. You got, you got 20 extra miles in you, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's the, uh, it's also the Navy SEAL say it too, right? Like when you think you're done, you have like 40% more or something like that. They have a, yeah. there's a Navy SEAL rule probably, that has. Probably very much based on that. Similar to that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, last question is this. Um, what if what's the one character trait or life skill that you would want in someone uh that's either working for you, that you're maybe you're coaching, you know, what's that one skill that you like the prerequisite if you could have for anybody to that you're interacting with? Um wow. I, I think that it's you know. It's, 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 it's two, but it's, but they're the same drive and determination. Mm. Um, because if you have the drive and you deter and you're determined, I think that can get, get you over many humps. It can get you over a lack of skill. Um, it, it can really help you achieve much further in your goals than you think, you know, than, than others would that maybe are more talented. Um, whether that's in the workplace or whether or an athletic, an athletic world. I mean, I think, you know, because I think you can develop skill, but you can't, it's hard to develop drive and determination. Yeah. You know, I see it. You probably see it in kids too. I've seen it with my kids. It's there are some kids that are just, they are very competitive and then there's some that aren't, mm -hmm. you know, and you can be super talented, but if you don't have the competitive drive to, to, to compete and, you know, be out, aggressive out there, then, um, you're never going to rise to that next level. Yeah. So that's where drive and determination comes in. The ability to keep going regardless of circumstances, right? Just, you know, keep at it, keep trying. Yeah. Um, uh, well, Kent, you know, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, thank you, Jason. how can people learn more about what you're doing? Where, you know, where can they find you on social media, website, uh, yeah, so well, that's where they can learn more about you. Sure. At Kent weed, uh, is Instagram. And then I'm on Facebook as well. Kent weed. Um, liveyourpurpose.com, L I V E U R purpose.com is my website. And you can find out about my blogs and my meditation program there and all the programs that I'm going to, upcoming program is going to be launching in the future. Um, and if your viewers, uh, you know, are interested in the Taming Monkey, my meditation, I'm happy to give them a discount. Just, uh, have them DM me on Instagram. And uh, I'll send them a code for, for the discount as well. And it's a great program. It's six, six, six weeks long. Mm. It takes 15 minutes to do each program. And then the meditation is less than 10 minutes a day. One builds on the top of the other. And I guarantee you'll see results within a week. I mean, wow. I have so many reviews, so many people and testimonials that are just like praising it. And, and it's made such a difference in their lives. And by the way, all the profits go to charity. I don't make any money off it. It's not about making money. It's about helping others. So. Well, that's amazing, Kent. Well, uh, you know, thank you again for joining us today. So many great insights on this one. I appreciate your time. Uh, look forward to having more conversations with you in the future yeah. as well. Love it, Jason. Thank you so much. You were great. You were awesome. Thanks. So nice to, to be on the podcast with you and um, good luck with everything in the future. Appreciate it. Yeah, we will do. All Have right, a good sure. one. Well, uh, parenting is one of the most important things we can do in life. So again, make sure you check out that link below for that parenting course to help you have a great experience with your kid in sports. Again, this was episode 79 with Kent Weed. All of his information is also in the description below to check out liveyourpurpose.com right now and see what more you can learn about how to be on purpose and check out that meditation because I bet as well, you can find some great stuff on there. And finally, check out 40athletes.com so, so how we can help you 
uh, have sports be a better experience for you and your kid. All right. Have a great day.